This video is a brief introduction to how the beautiful fiddlehead double paddle canoe is built. The boat is built using a so-called lapstrake dory construction technique. Lapstrake means that the planks that cover the side of the boat overlap. At the overlaps, the plank thickness is almost doubled, which increases the strength of the hull quite dramatically. With lapstrake construction, you can use very thin planking while still getting a very strong hull. This makes it ideal for lightweight boat building. Dory construction means that instead of a keel or a backbone, the boat has a plank bottom. This method is quicker and easier to build than a fully planked boat. This makes it a great place to start for a first time boat builder. The first steps in the construction process is to get the various structural parts of the boat ready. First I'm building the bottom panel. This panel is glued up from several narrower boards. And I'm laying it out by taking coordinates from the table of offsets. Then I connect the points with a flexible wooden batten and cut out the shape. Here I'm building the frames. I've made patterns for them by pricking through the full-size drawings that are included in Harry Bryan's plans. The frames are made of seven pieces each that are screwed and glued together. The 14 and a half foot two-person fiddlehead canoe that I'm building here has three frames. The shorter, single-person versions of the fiddlehead just have one frame that's placed in the middle of the boat. Now I'm building the watertight bulkheads. These bulkheads are made of two thin layers of wood that are glued together with the grain running diagonally to each other. This makes for a very strong panel and it makes it very dimensionally stable much like a sheet of plywood. Finally, I'm building the stems. Again, I'm making a pattern by pricking through the full-size drawings that are included in the plants. Now it's time to set up the framework for the boat. I've built a strong back and I've made sure that it's perfectly straight and level. At the middle of it, I've drawn accurate center line. Now I'm attaching the frames and the bulkheads to it. I'm making sure that they're at the correct spacing as specified in the plans. They also need to be perfectly plumb, square and at the correct height over the strong back. Then I screw and glue the stems to the ends of the bottom panel. The bottom and stems assembly is then placed on top of the frames and the bulkheads. After making sure the alignment is correct, these parts are screwed and glued together. Now it's almost time to start planking up the boat. But first I need to install a shear clamp. The shear clamp is a thin strip of wood that defines the shear line or profile of the boat. It'll be used for fastening the shear plank and the decking to it, which we'll get back to later in this video. I also want to bevel the edges of the bottom panel so that they'll be a good tight fit against the first plank. I'm using a so-called jump stick to figure out how much wood needs to be removed at each frame or bulkhead. Then I'm drawing a fair line between these points using a flexible wooden batten. This is the line I'll need to plane to in order to get the correct bevel all the way. At this point, I'm also adjusting the bevel at the stem so it'll fit the first plank nicely. Again, I'm using my flexible batten to figure out how much wood I need to remove. Now I'm ready to start planking the boat. The boat has three planks on each side. The first one is called the garboard plank. Here I'm making a pattern for the garboards. I'm cutting out some strips of cardboard that I tack onto the frames and the bulkheads. The ends of these cardboard strips mark the width of the plank. I'm also making cardboard patterns for the stem ends of the plank. Then I'm using some thin strips of wood to connect the cardboard pieces. The strips of wood are quite thin, so I'm being careful not to pull them upwards or downwards as I glue them on. I want the strips to fall as easily and naturally as possible onto the cardboard pieces, so I won't get any distortions in my pattern. Now the plank pattern is done and I can take it off. I'm placing it on my planking stock and I try to make it follow the grain of the wood the best I can. 
I'm making pencil marks at the edges of the cardboard patterns. Then I'm drawing a line through all the points using a flexible batten. I'm cutting close to the line and then I'm doing the last bit of shaping with a block plane. Now I just need to split the board in two to get my pair of identical planks. This is an easy method for me because I have a big bandsaw that's set up for heavy rib cutting. If you don't have this kind of setup, simply using two thinner pieces of wood for the plank pair will work just as well. Now I'm ready to install the garboard planks on the boat. These planks take quite a bit of a twist towards the ends, so I'm steaming them to make them more supple. If you don't have a steam box, wrapping the plank ends in a towel and pouring boiling water over it will most likely work too. Then I'm marking where the garboard and the middle planks will overlap. And at the ends I'm cutting a ramp-shaped rabbit known as a gain. This is necessary to get a watertight fit at the stems. The garboard plank is sealed with a bead of flexible polyurethane cork. This will strengthen the joint and keep the boat watertight even if the fit isn't 100% perfect and even if the wood swells up in the water and dries out in the sun. With the garboard plank in place, I'm fastening it with bronze screws at the stems, bulkheads and frames. The joint between the bottom panel and the plank is screwed from the stem to the watertight bulkhead and copper riveted in the cockpit section of the boat. The remaining two planks go on in a similar way, although they won't need steam bending. Here I'm beveling the edge of the garboard plank to make it fit the middle plank. I'm using a flexible batten and a notch stick of wood to help me get the correct angle all the way. In combination, the batten and the stick act as a placeholder for the middle plank. So if there's a good tight fit under my stick, there'll also be a good tight fit at the plank joint. The middle and the shear planks are fastened with rivets, clinch nails and screws. The shear plank is also nailed and glued to the thin shear clamp. Only the gain areas of the middle and shear planks are corked to begin with. The rest of the plank seam is corked after the planking is complete. With all the planking done, I'm trimming off the excess wood of the garboard plank. Now I'm ready to turn the boat right side up. I only peeled a few of the rivets during the planking process. So now it's time to finish the rest. Inside the watertight compartment there isn't room to swing a hammer, so I'm using clinch nails there. Now I'm ready to start building the deck framing. First I'm installing the sensor carlins at each end of the boat. Then I'm installing the long carlins that run parallel with the shear plank. When they're in, I'm fairing the deck structure. I want an even surface with smooth, flowing lines that will fit the decking nicely. The decking consists of two layers. The lower layer are long, narrow covering boards that go all the way from end to end. The covering boards are fastened to the boat with thickened epoxy and bronze ring nails. A thin block of wood is glued under the covering boards where they butt together. Then the upper layer of decking goes on. This layer is supported by the covering boards, the center carlin and by the knees I'm installing here. To get the watertight bulkhead and the center carlin at the correct height to support the decking, I'm gluing in some thin strips of wood. Then I'm fairing the structure. I'm describing the shape for the decking pieces from underneath. The underside of these pieces have been sealed with epoxy to keep them from shrinking and swelling once they are installed on the boat. I'm fitting the joint between the deck pieces with a block plane. And I'm rounding off the ends. Then I'm fastening the decking with screws set in a flexible sealant. Now I'm ready to start working on the combing. 
The combing should lean out a bit, so I need to bevel the long carlins and the combing support knees a bit, especially towards the ends of the boat. I'm using this little shop-made contraption to see how much wood I need to remove. The shape of the combing sides is described in the plans, but I decided I want to make a pattern for it anyway. The process of making this pattern is very similar to the plank patterning process. Then I draw the shape of my combing side. I cut it out and plane it to the line. Once the shape is good, I split it on the bandsaw to get two identical pieces. The combing sides take a sharp bend at the ends, so to make sure they won't break, I'm giving them a few minutes in the steam box before I install them. I'm fastening the combing sides to the long carlins and the combing support knees using small bronze screws. The combing sides in, I need to make the combing ends. First, I'm gluing a triangular block of wood to the inside of the ends. When the glue has cured, I'm cutting off the end of the combing. Then, I'm gluing another triangular block on the outside. To finish off, I'm cutting off the excess wood. Now I'm moving on to the outside of the boat. The fiddlehead canoe has a two-piece stem. This means that it has an inner stem where the bottom panel and the plank ends are attached. But it has an outer stem too, also known as a false stem or a cutwater. Here I'm shaping these pieces. They need to fit the inner stems, so I'm using their pattern to get the inside curve right. Once the shape's good, I'm beveling them to their pointy cutwater shape. Then I'm attaching them to the boat using bronze screws and polyurethane cork. I'm cutting them off at the bottom and I'm adding a protective brass strip. Finally, I'm finishing the head of the stem to a shape that I think looks good. To protect the shear planks and the decking, I'll add a guard to each side of the boat. These guards are simple hardwood strips with beveled edges that are nailed in place. Now I'm turning my attention back to the inside of the boat. Here I'm building the ingenious little hatch covers that are used to seal off the watertight compartments at each end of the boat. These covers consist of an oval and a round piece of wood that I glued together. Behind the two pieces, there's a clamping bar with a threaded insert in it. The hatch cover is installed by twisting it into the oval hatch opening. Then the thumb screw is turned to make the clamping bar pull the cover tight. Here I'm making the backrests for the canoe. I'm building the long 14 and a half foot fiddlehead. So I need to make two backrests that can be placed in three different positions so the boat can be paddled either by two persons or single-handed. First, I'm positioning the brackets correctly on the combing. This will help me determine the angle of the hole I need to drill for the backrest. Then I'm drilling the holes. And I'm cutting out the shape of the brackets. They get a copper rivet on each side for added strength. Here I'm making the support bar for the backrest. I'm rounding off the ends of it with a chisel, a rasp and sandpaper. Then I'm making the pads for the backrest. I'm steam bending them in a form to make them slightly curved. I'm attaching the pads to the bar with screws and glue. To finish the backrests, I'm bolting the brackets through the combing sides and the long carlins. When paddling a double paddle canoe, it's important to have a good foot support to help keep the body steady. So here I'm building the foot braces for my boat. The foot braces are attached to a track at the bottom of the boat. The track has threaded inserts that accept the thumb screw that goes through the holes in the foot brace. Now all that's left to do is to paint and varnish the boat. I'm giving the inside of the hull two coats of primer. Then I'm varnishing the decking, the combing, the backrests, seats and the double paddles. The seats are a special feature of the 14 and a half foot fiddlehead 
that'll keep the paddlers from sitting straight on a frame or a foot brace track. The double paddle is a really fun little project in itself. I've made a separate video about how it's built that you may want to check out. With a few coats of primer and varnish on, I've turned the boat upside down. Now I'm giving the outside of the hull two coats of primer. Then I'm giving it two coats of paint. When the paint has dried, I'm turning the boat right side up again. The inside of the boat gets two coats of semi-gloss paint and the bright finished parts get another five or six coats of varnish. <laughs> 